Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, senior managers at the Royal Bank of Scotland here will not face any disciplinary action over the mistreatment of small businesses left struggling after the financial crisis. The bank's controversial global restructuring group has been accused of deliberately driving small firms into the ground so that it could sell off their assets on the cheap. Furious business owners who say their lives were ruined by the bank have described the city watchdog as a supine, toothless regulator. This is our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy. John Glover's recycling business was pushed to the brink when it was dumped into RBS's global restructuring group. GRG, the unit that stands accused of driving thousands of viable firms out of business to turn a profit for RBS in the wake of the financial crisis. The bank denies the allegations and in the end, Bywaters managed to survive. But Mr Glover is furious that the financial regulator, the FCA, has today allowed the bankers to go scot-free. As a regulator, they should be shown the door and get somebody in who can do the job. We've never seen them actually take proper action. We've only seen them waste time. Companies like Bywaters reading this report were hoping that finally there'd be some recognition of the treatment that they and thousands of other small businesses say they endured at the hands of RBS's infamous GRG restructuring unit, that regardless of financial compensation, that managers at least would be held to account by their regulator. Yet two years on, the FCA has today concluded it doesn't have the powers to take action against any senior RBS bankers. And that even if they did, in their words, they found no evidence that any member of senior management was dishonest or lacking in integrity. Yet the regulator's own independently commissioned report found that GRG management was aware or should have been aware of the excesses inside GRG, including this infamous just hit budget memo that told staff sometimes you need to let customers hang themselves and that GRG's behaviour amounted to an intentional and coordinated strategy inside the bank. And don't forget this. So GRG is not, as is commonly supposed, a profit centre? It is absolutely not a profit centre. When two GRG bosses denied the unit was making profits, only to be corrected by the bank's chairman with a public apology just weeks later. Yet today, the regulator says there simply isn't enough evidence to take action. The FCA acknowledged GRG customers would be frustrated, but justified its decision, saying GRG's commercial activities were unregulated in the UK and as such were largely outside its jurisdiction. But it conceded the bank's failures were significant and might ordinarily trigger disciplinary action if they occurred in a regulated business. Well, I'm very disappointed. The FCA's position is entirely unacceptable. Phase one of the inquiry into RBS and GRG determined they were guilty of wholesale mistreatment of their small business customers. Phase two was supposed to identify who was responsible. They failed to do that. These people at the moment are untouchable in our sector. They are all powerful. They need to be held to account. John Glover feels the same. And it culminated in this offer letter. It's the very generous offer of £5,181.75. He's rejected RBS's compensation offer and is launching his own case against the bank. As for the FCA, the question for businesses like Bywaters remains this. Does the regulator lack the necessary teeth, as it claims, or lack the courage to use them? Well, the small business owner Paul Clark claims his haulage firm was ruined after he switched banks to RBS and he joins us now from Norwich. Mr Clark, what were you hoping would happen? Well, justification really. I mean, I've been living this every day and still living with this issue. I'm very fortunate that I'm in litigation against RBS NatWest, but everyone else, thousands and thousands of business with identical identical situation to mine um, can't move forward we we look at the government we look at the fca to support us support the smes 
We only fight for ourselves, but we also fight for our children. If the FCI have got no strength with the banks, how are our children going to be able to manage in the future? But were you hoping that individual managers who dealt with you would be pursued or that RBS as a whole would face some sort of sanction? It had to come from above because it was systematic what they did to me. I've spoke to thousands over the last five years that I lost my business. Thousands of businesses and their stories identical to mine. So they had to come from above. It didn't just come from an individual manager. They were doing their job. I mean, I had, we, my wife and I had managers and directors of RBS, GRG, come to our farm and say, we've come to see our property. This is after they took four or five hundred thousand pounds cash. Starvation took it from my business over a four year business. We weren't struggling. They took four years to kill me. SMEs were not easy to put down. We fight like a hard mail. I, I'm not, I, mean, I know it's a very complicated case and it took place over a long period of time, but can you give us in a nutshell a sense of why you believe um, this group of RBS pushed your business over the edge? What did they do? Well, basically, um, even from the kickoff, we, uh, we were only with NatWest RBS for six months. I put in a complaint because of an interest protection product that I was given from um, um, the manager saying, we'll give you this free product. I complained because £6,000 hit our account. We put a complaint in. And within eight weeks, I was introduced to a department called GRG. A manager came to see me, said, I'm taking over your account. And by the way, I'm charging you £2,000 for this visit today. We're charging you monitoring fees and we're going to revalue your property. And I said, well, hold on, what's the charge for revaluing the property? Oh, it could be a few thousand, don't worry. This is like six months after they'd already valued when we'd moved to RBS. Um, our property was owned by us um, as a residential property. They convinced us and talked us into changing all our borrowings into commercial. Why did they do that? They, then we found ourselves in GRG. We could not move because of the interest rate product that we were given and they just drained us dry from day to day. It was like Russian roulette. It was like and a gun to your head and every time they clicked the button. And, and you're, you say you're, I mean, this is obviously the subject of litigation now, so they, they, they dispute the version of events that you just, you've just told us. I mean, what, what, give, us a, give us a sense of, you know, what this has done to, to your life, to your family. The only reason, it's very, very hard. It breaks you as a person. Sorry. I used to be able to stand up in the hundred people and talk about my life and my business. And they've broken me as a person. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, to, to upset you like that. But Paul Clark, thank you very much indeed for thank coming you, in sir. to tell us uh, your thank story. You. Thank you. The Royal Bank of Scotland has announced it will pay its first dividend in nearly 10 years. The bank is still two-thirds publicly owned after being bailed out at the height of the financial crisis. Earlier this week, there was anger from many small businesses after RBS learned it would face no action from the financial watchdog for the excesses of one of its small business units during the crisis. Royal Bank of Scotland's now defunct Global Restructuring Group, or GRG, stands accused of driving thousands of small firms out of business in order to sell their assets and turn a profit for the bank. Allegations the bank denies. An earlier report from the Financial Conduct Authority found that GRG management was aware or should have been aware of the excesses inside the unit, including a memo that told staff, sometimes you need to let customers hang themselves and that GRG's behaviour amounted to an intentional and coordinated strategy inside the bank. But on Tuesday, the regulator decided to take no action against RBS or any individuals. It said there was no evidence any member of senior management was dishonest or lacking in integrity. This programme spoke to Paul Clark, who said his haulage firm was ruined by the GRG unit, a claim RBS disputes. It's very, very hard. It breaks you as a person. Sorry. The FCA also said this week the bank fell well short in its treatment of GRG customers. 
RBS has promised to learn from its mistakes, as its chief executive said this morning. Now, look, and we've uh, the, the summary report from the regulator is out this week. Uh, it shows the combination of four or five years' work, and we admit we didn't get a lot of things right, and that's why we've put in place the complaints process. We've refunded fees, and uh, you know we've we've got a process in place for those customers who are unsatisfied that they can come through that process. But the idea that this is behind you, that's my point. These business um, owners are telling us their lives have been destroyed by the GRG scandal. And let's be clear, the FCA said the fact we can't take action in, an, in no way condones the behaviour of RBS. We expect high standards and they fell for, far short. Mm. No. So drawing a line under it is very offensive for a lot of those business No, look, people. I understand that, and that's why um, with the FCA we've put in place the complaints process, why we've uh, actually gone through and uh, taken the advice uh, from all of those reviews and tried to put things right. I mean, how much of the £400 million set aside for compensation has been paid out? Uh, look, I don't know that exact number, um, but we've paid out £115 million of that into, into the fee structure. And as I said, this is quite a different bank to what it was between 2008 and even yeah, but 2008. that's very small comfort to those business people who say their livelihoods, their businesses were destroyed. That's right. But is that all the comfort you can offer them? No, look, I'm sorry, we've, we've been through this many times, we've put out the apologies, we've put out... But it's very so my point is they will find it very hard today no, no, for the I bank to be that. saying we're moving forward. We, we've dealt with these issues. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know what more you want me to say. There is no more to say. Uh, this is not me, it is those people. You know, we spoke to a man just this week, a middle-aged man, proud man, who cried because he said he was broken. Now look, and, and as I've said, this is a different bank to what it was in those times. I'm sorry, I, I can't help you any further than that. You've changed the bank, but the small businesses are still telling us that RBS are fighting every claim tooth and nail. It's not, look, it's not the case. They've got a complaints process that a High Court judge sits over the top of. He's the one that at the end of the day makes the jurisdiction around the facts of the case. So if there are customers that are having difficulties, that's where they should go. And I wonder just how much taxpayers' money is being spent fighting these small business people. Okay. Thanks very much. Do you have anything else to say in terms of... No, I just wonder how personally, for example, you have been left after this. No, look, it, it has been a major personal issue for the bank itself and for our staff and for our customers. Do you feel ashamed of its past? Look, I wasn't here for its past, so... Well, you're here now. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to Brexit, the White Paper, you know, has talked about a trade deal for goods but not services. I mean, how alarming was that for you? Well, we're having to plan as the, for, for a, uh, a, a, uh, an eventuality that may not be good for, for customers or ourselves. Um, we're hoping for something much better than that. Um, but really what we need today is a certainty around what the arrangements will be. So would you have appreciated more clarity on, on that from the government in this paper? Well, look, we, we uh, are hoping that the government will be able to give us clarity over the next three odd months uh, so that we can help customers uh, find their way through whatever the changes they need to make. Ross McEwen, the Chief Executive of RBS, speaking to me earlier. I've been